I'm so glad you're here. I've got a biography, but it's a very interesting one about the boy who invented the popsicle, the cool science behind Frank Epperson's famous frozen treat, written by Anne Renald and Mylan Pavlovic. And I said it was a biography. That meant the librarian looked in the section where the biographies or stories about people were. And what's interesting about this one is the illustrations are done in cartoon, so they're very interesting to you. But at the very end, you'll notice there's some pictures as well. Now, Frank William Epperson knew that he want, what he wanted to do when he grew up. And everyone in Frank's family knew too, because in case they forgot, he reminded them often. I want to be a great inventor, he would say. So when not busy with schoolwork or chores, Frank could be found adventuring with his brother Craig, practicing his coronet, or learning magic tricks. He also pondered important questions. Do ants have ears? Do goldfish sleep? Do woodpeckers get headaches when they peck the wood all day? Well, Frank's favorite pastime was inventing, and to invent, Frank knew he had to experiment. So off he would go to his laboratory, which was his back porch. There, he doodled and designed. He tinkered and tested. He analyzed and scrutinized. I love that word. And by the time Frank was 10 years old, he had already masterminded his first invention, a hand car with two handles. At twice the speed of a regular one-handled hand car, Frank whizzed down the streets of his neighborhood. He says, hot dog. Hand cars were toys um, that children played with long ago. Now Frank also experimented with liquids. Why won't they play together? You can do your own experiment, check it out, whether you upload it in Flipgrid or just do it without. You use cooking oil, water, and a glass, and you pour the cooking oil in the glass, and then you add the water, and you mix them together with a spoon, and then wait two minutes, and look at what happened. I'm not going to tell you the results. I'm gonna turn the page for you. And when Frank, was experimenting. He loved most when he experimented with flavored soda waters. You know, the kind that hissed and whizzed when he held a glass full to his ear and it said it, it sent tangy bubbles galloping across his tongue with every gulp. Frank had his heart set on inventing the yummiest, most thirst quenching, lip smacking soda water drink ever. So Frank would go off to the corner store to buy the flavored soda water powders that he needed for his experiments and often he went with his little brother, Cray, tagging along. Now, Cray was a handy taster for Frank's concoctions. Some of his attempts were unsuccessful. You could even say they were disastrous. <laughs> it doesn't look like he liked it at all, but Frank just kept on trying. So there's another experiment. If you had lemon juice, water, a drinking glass, baking soda, and sugar, you can um, stop this, gather those ingredients, lemon juice, water, a glass, baking soda, and sugar. And you pour the lemon juice into the glass, about four tablespoons. You add the water, about a cup. You add the baking soda and mix well. That's gonna be just one half of a teaspoon. You should see some fizzing action going on. You can taste your lemonade and then add a little bit of sugar up to a teaspoon or so. Um, to sweeten it up. Now the baking soda reacted with lemon juice. It created a gas. And you can check this out a little bit more later on too. Well, one day, Frank and the other children in the neighborhood decided to build a miniature amusement park. There was a theater, a merry-go-round, and a scenic railway. Frank was assigned the soda water stand, which suited him just fine, because he could share his soda water creations with all of his friends. It was also around this time that something peculiar happened. The temperature dipped and then plunged. This would not have been unusual had Frank lived in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, or Porcatello, Idaho, where it could be bitterly cold in the winter. But he lived in San Francisco, California, where only rarely did the temperature drop below freezing. So Frank tried another experiment. He left a glass of flavored soda water outside overnight. When he woke the next morning, Frank ran to his back porch to discover his soda water had frozen solid. He could no longer sip it. He had to lick it 
like a lollipop. So Frank had invented a frozen drink on a stick. Hot dog, he says. As he grew older, Frank's invention did not melt from his memory. He just tucked it away in the corner of his mind. And there it stayed while he and his sweetheart, Mary Frances, began raising a gaggle of their own. But when Frank noticed more and more people eating chocolate-covered ice cream bars, off he went to his laboratory, now his garage, to experiment. Hmm, could I make, my, could I make money with my frozen drink invention? You know, what if I just used fruit juices? So Frank found a way to make many of his drinks on a stick at the same time, with test tubes to mold them. Hot dog, wooden sticks were holding them, and he even had a cool way that he could freeze them. For Frank's drink on a stick to freeze, they had to be cold, very cold. Colder than zero degrees Celsius, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or the freezing point of water. Why? Because their ingredients, like sugar and flavoring, lowered their freezing point. So what did Frank do? He built a freezing box that held dozens of test tubes suspended in a mixture of crushed ice and salt because Frank knew that salt lowered the freezing point of water and that salty water froze as much at a much lower temperature than plain water and the salt ice mixture would be colder than zero degrees. Here's another experiment if you get to check this book out at the library. And Frank's drink on a stick also had to freeze quickly. If they froze too quickly, the sugar and the flavoring, which were heavier than water, would settle to the bottom of the tubes, leaving just flavorless frozen water at the top. Frank wanted his treats to have the same tasty flavor all the way through. The salt and crushed ice mix mixture surrounding the test tubes was so cold, it froze the liquid inside the tube in just minutes. There's a flash frozen experiment that you can try that is pretty yummy. So I encourage you to check this book out from your library or order it if you're able to do so. Frank named his invention the Epsicle and began selling it for nickel at county fairs and beaches. In the evenings, his children helped him roll the nickels that he had earned. Frank had a clever way to encourage shop owners to sell his frozen treats. For several weeks in a row, he sent one of his children into a store to buy an Epsicle and each week the shop owner would have to tell a different child that Epsicles were not sold in the store. Frank would then visit the store himself and ask the shop owner, owner to stack his treats. Now, of course, the owner agreed after having so many requests. Frank's children were always keen to sample their father's confections, and with all the clamoring for their pop's tasty fabrications in time, the name of Frank's invention changed to the pop sickle because pop is another word for dad and his children were always saying dad they wanted a sickle now i told you at the beginning that there would be some real pictures there's an author's note here that has a little bit more of a backstory for the adults and then here's the actual pictures of the man that invented the pop sickle so long ago so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you checked out making some lemonade and another experiment and the initial challenge was to find one thing you could compare with the last story i read the old truck. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. Stay well.